Color and color ramps are a great way to visualize data where we have, say, a grid of x, y points. And at each one of those point locations, you have another variable, for example, elevation. And you choose a color at each point based on that third variable. You see weather data represented like this all the time. Temperature, wind speed, humidity are often represented in what are referred to commonly as heat maps, or in mathematics are referred to typically as a scalar field. The color ramp itself is a representation of colors continuously across some range of values. And the choice of color ramp is something that in fact is very controversial. If you're familiar with the data visualization literature, I'm sure you're feeling like this is old news and, and you've heard this a lot before, but I was in a room with a bunch of scientists the other day and I said, have you heard of the rainbow color map controversy? And the blank stares I got were evidence that clearly they had not heard about this. If you're looking for some more definitive evidence, I actually found an interesting article that was done by Michael Stozel and Lena Stein, where they looked through journal articles from 2005 to 2020 and found that the misuse of color just was increasing over time. And of those articles that had color issues, over 20% of those were using the rainbow color map. Hi, I'm Pamela Schultz, and in this video, we're going to start by giving you a little bit more background as to what this controversy is over the rainbow color map. Next, I'm going to show you the new color ramp options that we've added into Datagraph version 5.3 and do a bit of a demo of the scalar field command that you can use to create heat maps or scalar fields. And lastly, one of the things that's really nice about Datagraph is that you can actually create your own custom color ramps. So I'll show you how to do that as well. Datagraph is a native Mac OS software tool for data analysis and visualization that does not require any coding. If you don't have Datagraph, go into the description of this video for information on how to get a trial. Let's get started. First, let's start by talking about the traditional rainbow color map known as JET. The original JET color map was created by researchers at the University of Illinois, I believe sometime in the early 90s. They used the jet color ramp in images like this of an astrophysical jet where one fluid is colliding with another. To illustrate the issues that come up when using the jet color ramp, let's first consider a surface where we have a continual change in color that we represent using a grayscale. Here's what the same data looks like if I apply the jet color ramp to this data. There's three issues here that I'd like to point out. The first issue is that applying the rainbow color map to this smooth surface implies a structure that is not there. In particular, the yellow band that you see makes it look as though there's something different about that region of space on this surface, when in fact, again, it's just a smoothly changing variable. Second, the rainbow color map can falsely imply meaning. For example, if we were using this to represent wind speeds, you would assume that the transition to red would mean bad, but unless we've specifically encoded the color ramp so that the transition to red actually does correspond to something bad, say hurricane force winds, it's possible we could either over or underestimate the threat to a particular storm. If that's not enough, the perception of information from visualizations using the jet rainbow color map can be difficult, if not impossible, for people with color vision deficiencies. In 2019, researchers at Google released a new rainbow color ramp improved version called Turbo. And if we take the same data and we compare what does it look like with rainbow versus turbo, you can see that that band that we had of yellow is no longer there and it does now look more like a smooth continuous surface. They also looked closely at how images developed using Turbo would look for people with color vision deficiencies. And for the most part, most of the population would be able to properly understand and perceive the changes in color. Now in this part of the video, I'm going to demonstrate how to create a scalar field in Datagraph and where to see these new color maps, because not only did we replace the rainbow jet color ramp with the turbo, we also added some other color ramps that are commonly used for scientific data visualization. Here we are now in Datagraph, and I want you to notice how I have this single column of numbers. In fact, this is the data that we can use to generate that jet image of the fluids colliding. That's a, an example file that's included in MATLAB, and I found this file online, brought it through an importer, and 
now I have it all in one column. Now this doesn't tell me the X and Y coordinate for each row, but that's okay. My scalar field command can handle this. So first of all, how do I add the scalar field? I'm going to go up to the draw menu in the toolbar and you'll see that there is the scalar field command is listed uh, down here. You can go ahead and click the add button to create the control object that we're gonna use to specify the data. But if you really want to learn the ins and outs of scalar fields, then click on the uh, question mark here, and this will bring you to our help article online. And if you want to, for example, learn about all the new color maps, you can go down to the color section, and you'll see that it's not only the uh, turbo color map that we've added, but we have these other color ramps as well. By default, when you create the scalar field command, it expects what we call a flattened format, where you have a column of values, and then you have a corresponding column of X and Y locations. Now, for this data, I actually know what the structure of the grid is, and there's a setting that I can say, which is uniform, where I can just specify the grid size within the command itself. So first of all, let's just go ahead and use the column now for my values. Now the grid size isn't set up right, so which is why this doesn't look yet like the Flujet, um, but we're going to go ahead and set this here. And I've uh, done this before, so I know it's 300 by 400, and this is actually a column first orientation. And sure enough, now I see my jet. And if I want to change the colors here, then I can expand the scalar field command open up the color section and gray scale is what our default color ramp is. But if you want to change this to any of the other color ramps, then you'll see them here. And the first one that is in color is in fact the turbo color map. Now I realized one important thing that I should point out is that in the axis settings, I'd already gone ahead and select force aspect ratio equal to one. So make sure if you're using data that does represent actual units of physical units, you wanna have this checked uh, so your image looks appropriate. I can show you, for example, here, the difference of if I uncheck this, it's gonna be stretched, but when I have this checked, this is in fact what the image should look like. The other thing that I want to point out to you is that if your data is not already in a format where all of your Z values, for example, all the values that you're trying to represent at these grid points are in one column, Datagraph has a handy functionality that's under the data menu for flattening columns. You would have to select all of your columns that are in your data set and then go to data, flatten columns, and it will automatically append them all to one another to create this flattened format. And if I want to show the actual color ramp on this, not just the image with the colors, then I can go ahead and add a color ramp legend. A quick way to do that is to use the gear menu on the command itself, and there you'll see an option for add color ramp. If you click that button, it will go ahead and add the color ramp to the graphic, as you see here. Now we're at the third and final part of this video where I'm going to show you how to make your own custom color maps. Right now, you'll recognize this is still the turbo color map that's in a graphic that I've done some formatting on. I've moved the color map legend itself to the bottom, and I've also changed the intensity just to go from a simple zero to one. But let me show you some other things that we can create here in Datagraph. For example, what if we just wanted to go from a single color to another color? Here's a yellow to blue color map. Here's one that we would call a divergent color map. There's a single color, a light color in the middle. On one side we have blue, on the other side we have red. Here we're going through multiple colors. I think this looks actually pretty um, in interesting in terms of the colors that are used, um, but you can see along the scale how this is going from a light color to a very dark color with the greens and the purple in between. Uh, here's a color map that is thresholds. So we have bright lines at specific values. And then the last one that I'm going to show you actually combines both the grayscale in between, but extreme values on either ends. Now let's create our first color map. We're going to make the two color color map that goes from yellow to blue. And you're going to do this over in the, uh, the data side panel. And at the bottom section where the variables are, I don't have any there yet, but click the other menu, then select color ramp. 
That adds our color ramp object. I'm going to call this one Y to B for yellow to blue. And if you expand this out, you'll see that there is a range given. This is already set up by default to go from zero to one. And the two color tiles that you see here are the uh, basically going to form the range. The left side is the lowest value and the right side is going to be the uh, highest value. So click the one on the left and go ahead and select yellow. Click the one on the right and we go ahead and we can select a blue color. And that's it. Now I have my yellow to blue color ramp and you can see how the colors are blended in between um, both the yellow and the blue. To use this, I'm going to clone the graph that I've already created, expand that out, and in the ramp menu, instead of saying standard, if you click that now, you'll see the custom color ramp that you created. We can select, select our yellow to blue color ramp, and sure enough, that updates my graph and also updates the color ramp legend. For the next one, that's going to be the divergent color map. I've already created the color map uh, variable, and I've also set up the graph. I'm going to go ahead and expand this out again, and you will see I just have these, by default, these two color tiles that I can modify, but I want to have a range that goes from blue to a light color and then to my light color to red. So to do that, I can add another level to this. Click the plus symbol on the right, and now I have four color tiles where I'm actually just gonna set up two ranges where the max of one range is gonna be the min of the next range. So first, let's just do the color tiles. I can have the minimum, again, will be blue. The maximum will be red. In between, I'm going to use a light color. And one really, really handy thing when you're setting these up is that if you have a tile that you've already set to a color you want, click and drag that and drop it onto another color tile to populate. Now the other thing that's very handy when setting up multiple uh, color ramps and you want the end of one to be the beginning of the next one, we can use the slider that's right here and let's decrease the maximum value for the first one and notice immediately what Datagraph does is it picks up that change and because this is such a common thing to do, it will automatically set the beginning of the uh, subsequent color ramp to the same value as the end of this color ramp. So now we're all set. We have our divergent color ramp. The next one I'm going to make is going to have multiple ranges. I've set up the graph already, but we don't always have to start completely from scratch. I can hold my option key, click and drag the divergent one that I created, and I'm going to add now more levels to this. And my starting point, actually, let me go ahead and select this one in the graph that we're looking at. I can actually just click and drag and drop this onto the menu. My starting point here is going to be a light color. So I could, again, click and drag the tile if I would like to do it that way. Uh, and the tiles themselves, when I change those, I can uh, do this also using the color spectrum. Again, once I set one color, then I'm going to use the click and drag within the uh, tiles themselves. It just makes things so much faster. I can pick this purple color here, click and drag. And just like I did for the first one, I'm going to use these sliders to kind of bring my, my values down here for the, um, the beginning and end of each one, and it will keep them synced to one another. And now you can see how I'm forming this color ramp. So depending on exactly where I want these colors to be and what makes sense, what's a meaningful break maybe from one color to another, or maybe just what looks interesting is something that I can very uh, dynamically uh, modify and change within my custom color ramp. This next ramp that I'm going to set up is going to have solid colors. So there won't be a blending of color, but we'll set up thresholds as to where we want these uh, different colors to change. And first I've gone ahead, I've made a copy of the graph, I've made a new uh, copy of the multi ramp that we just created. And one thing that I want you to notice is that when you have the hover turned on and you move your mouse over a scalar field, it will show you the Z value at that location. And in this data, there's a little bit of a shadow 
over here uh, in this region because there's some numbers that are slightly higher. And in this graphic, again, I want this to look a little cartoony. I want that to just be a solid color. So we're going to start by modifying this color ramp to have the first level be just white. And I, again, can change the where this threshold occurs with my slider. And I found, just with a little trial and error, by that here where I am at um, 0.05, really just knocks that out. So my background now is completely white and I don't need as many levels as I have here. So just like I use my plus symbol to add them, I can use my minus symbol to take them away. I do want this to go all the way to one at the end to cover the full range. But again, instead of having a color blending between two colors here, I'm just going to have one color for my bottom range and another color for the uh, top range. And there it is, my very kind of cartoony looking graphic. I think this is kind of a fun way to um, demonstrate these different techniques that we have. Here's the final example I'm going to show you. This one I called extremes because it has one value at one extreme, another value at another extreme, and then a grayscale in between. And this was based on a graph that I saw online. I thought this was a very interesting technique to use. So in this case, I started with the solid color ramp that I already created, and my bottom value is going to be a blue. So all the lower values will be blue, and I can adjust this up to say up to 0.2. I'm going to have my middle values be a grayscale. So I can click each one of these, pick a color here. Now I have that grayscale, but I want to increase the range of where the grayscale is located. We'll go up to 0.8 and that's it. There is my last color ramp. One last thing to be aware of is that any of the color ramps that you create in one file can easily be copy and pasted between files or drag and drop them so that you can consistently use the same color ramp even though you have different data sets. The ones that we created here today, you'll find this file in our online examples within Datagraph. And if this video was helpful for you, then please go ahead, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel if you're not already, and uh, until next time.